It's Wednesday the 14th of January from the MEN newsroom. This is Channel M's lunchtime news and these are today's headlines. A bid for Kaka reports Manchester City are ready to spend £100 million bringing the player to Eastlands. We'll have the latest. Kaka coming to enhance the great footballing tradition we have here in Manchester. Also coming up, no more free parking. The hospital staff told to ditch their cars. It will now mean that uh, it's going to cost me more again to come to work. I'd say uh, an extra two to three pound uh, per week, um, you know, which I think is a damn cheek. And the asbestos warning figures show how many of our children's schools contain the potentially deadly chemical. I think parents certainly should not panic and no one uh, should, should respond to this by saying people should not go to the schools. But parents could sensibly ask the head teacher and the school governors what steps are being taken to manage asbestos safely in the school. Good afternoon first today. Kaka could be on his way to Manchester City. Officials from the club are in Milan for talks with the Brazilian's current bosses about bringing him here for a record-breaking price. Let's get the very latest on this now from our reporter Mike Bradley, who's at Eastland. Well, the facts as we know them are that round about midnight, Italian media sources began to report a four-man delegation from Manchester City, a delegation which included Chief Executive Gary Cook, had arrived in Milan and tabled a £100 million bid for the 26-year-old Brazilian attacking midfielder. Club president and Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi, he then sanctioned an official press release for the club's website, part of which reads, City want Kaka at all costs. This time, they are here for real. By the sounds of it, a move for the player is inching ever closer. However, and as always, and however, it looks like AC Milan are keen to let the player go, but not until the summer. For their part, Manchester City want to tie up a deal as early, well, as early as this week. So that means the price of £100 million could rise even higher. For me, I don't think that price will rise anywhere near the £175 million being quoted in some of today's newspapers. But whatever happens from here on in, Manchester City's new owners are making good their promise to try and lure some of the world's greatest players to the city of Manchester Stadium. And for the very latest on this story, it's back to James in the studio. Thanks very much, Michael. Well, let's get a little bit more on this story now. And we're joined by Pete Spencer from the Manchester Evening News. Thank you for coming in. You were the first person to break this story. How likely do you think it is that we are going to see Kaka playing for Manchester City anytime soon? Well, I think there's a very good chance. Um, I've been looking at the odds that the book has uh, been putting forward and they've been changing dramatically this morning as the, the story has evolved. Um, and they're all saying it's uh, six to four on the vast majority. Um, and they're not very often wrong. So I think there's a very, very good chance. Uh, also added to that is it's the Italian Prime Minister who owns AC Milan and is a mega mogul in his own right has come out and said that this is a potential deal um, which illustrates to me that there is um, feelings from all sides that um, this is a, it's a potential and they have had Kaka in their sights for at least a month as has been reported in the Manchester Evening News and we knew this was uh, an imminent uh, move and we, we were first with it last night on our website. So what's going to be happening behind the scenes right now then? Well, uh, Gary Cook, who I've uh, described as a, a kind of a James Bond figure, I've seen uh, behind the scenes, um, globe-trotting um, and working with the agents, top secret of course, to, to nail his man, which is Kaka. So he'll be negotiating with the Italians and with the players' representatives. The players' agent has said this morning it's nothing to do with money. Since you've got to sell the club, they've got to prove that they want to uh, uh, get into Europe and that they are capable of getting to Europe. These are the things that a 26-year-old superstar wants to hear. That's what uh, Cook is doing now. Plenty of talking. He's good at that. Let's hope he impresses Kaka and gets him to City. And very briefly, how do you think this will go down with fans? There's bit, we've had 250 hits on the website so far uh, and I'm expecting that to at least treble as uh, more people get to know the news. Uh, 
it's very mixed. Some people are saying that maybe that £100 million <laughs> could have been spent on 10 £10 million pound players. Uh, others are saying this is a fantastic statement of intent. It brings back the halcyon days of the past when it was best Lauren Charlton against Mike Summerbait and Colin Bell and Francis Lee. So these are the times that we're in now. It's a very exciting story and great to, to be involved in it. OK, Pete Spencer, thank you very much for joining us. Well, we have been out getting some reaction to the news from supporters. I really look forward to Kaka coming to uh, enhance the great footballing tradition we have here in Manchester. Well, he's a good player, but I don't know if any player is worth 100 million. I don't even think David Beckham was worth that. If Berbatov is worth something like 30, Kaka would seem a steal at 100 million. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's sort of like paid slavery, really, isn't it? But um, 100 million, 50 million maybe. I think if they've got the money and they think he's a good player, then why not? Um, they're one of the biggest teams in the world now with their new, their new men behind them. So if it fits, why not? You think any footballer is worth the price maybe of two hospitals or four primary uh, schools? Well, um, in this, well, in times that they are now, most probably not. But, but then uh, there's a lot of things in the world that that don't go right, so uh, it's up to the government, I suppose, to sort out hospitals and stuff, not football players. Well, let's check some more of the day's main headlines now. And small businesses should soon find it easier to borrow money. The government announced plans to guarantee loans up to £20 billion to help firms cope with the economic downturn. Figures show 100 small to medium-sized companies go under every week. JJB Sports has warned its losses could reach £10 million over the year. The Wigan-based sportswear chain says it's struggling in what bosses call extremely difficult trading conditions. Sales were down in it stores almost 7% in the five weeks to January the 11th. Manchester is to get £3 million to spend on getting more tourists into the area. The North West's regional development agency is handing out the cash to help different places cope with the economic downturn. It will be used to promote them to visitors. Now, doctors and nurses at some of Greater Manchester's hospitals are being stripped of their parking permits to try to force them onto public transport. Any who still want to drive will have to pay to use spaces meant for patients and visitors. As research shows, a quarter of people driving to A&E have struggled to find a space. Here's Kevin Duffy. If you're lucky enough to have a job and a car to get there, then a parking space is probably pretty important to you. On the other hand, if you've got to drive to hospital, either as a patient or a visitor, then having a parking space is just as important there. Health bosses in Rochdale, Oldham, North Manchester and Bury say hospital users must come first. As a result, many hospital workers have been told that their £14 a month parking permit will shortly be withdrawn and they'll have to pay and display like everybody else. It will now mean that uh, it's going to cost me more again to come to work. I'd say uh, an extra two to three pound uh, per week, um, you know, which I think is a damn cheek. Whatever the rights and wrongs of this change in parking policy, health service workers say one thing is certain. More and more employees are going to be forced out onto the surrounding roads to avoid having to pay extra parking charges. And they say that could mean more congestion and potentially more chaos. A cynic might say that perhaps what's driving this is increasing revenue from parking fees? No, definitely not. The key aspects that we're looking at are improving patient and visitor parking, ensuring that those with the greatest need have a better chance of occupying the parking spaces on our hospital sites. Now, even though hospital chiefs are very clear on what they want to achieve, staff do still have the right of appeal. It looks as though the car wars are not yet over. Kevin Duffy for Channel M News. Coronation Street's bosses have had to apologise for covering up a cross while filming a wedding at a church in Nether Alterley. St Mary's was used as the backdrop for Tyrone and Molly to tie the knot on Monday. This is what the altar there normally looks like with the cross bolted to it. And here is how it appeared in the episode of The Soap earlier this week. The vicar says producers decided the symbol could offend some viewers, so they put candles and flowers in front of it. Granada TV says that was a mistake and they're looking 
looking at how and why this could happen. Well, this story is the subject of today's Channel M news poll. Were Coronation Street wrong to cover up the cross at that church? Would you have been offended by the sight of a cross on the altar? Or is that what you expect to see when scenes are shot in a church? We've had a text in to treble eight two one from Sandra in Droylston, who says crosses should be shown as they should be able to be worn if that be a person's choice. Well, what do you think? Keep your messages coming in to treble eight two one. Start them with the word news or you can email newsdesk at channelm.co.uk. We'll try to get through some more of your comments later. A man's been charged after two guns were found in a police raid in Sharston. Officers recovered a machine gun and a self-loading pistol from the property. Carl Franz from Peel Hall is accused of two counts of possessing a prohibited weapon and also possessing ammunition. He's due to appear before the city's magistrate. Blakely MP Graham Stringer is claiming there's no such thing as dyslexia. The outspoken Labour Party member has branded the condition a myth to cover up bad teaching of reading and writing. He says it's a cruel fiction and the sooner it's consigned to the dustbin, the better. Pensioners in part of Greater Manchester are getting lessons in how to deal with con men. Trading standards officers have dropped in on a group in Davy Hume to give out advice on how to spot a scam. If you have a, a telephone number of United Utilities, the, the gas board, the electricity board... Well, this is um, a, a senior crucial crew event. It's a crime reduction advice initiative. It's in response to Greater Manchester Police uh, Force Day of Action, uh, an operation that we call Operation Guardian. It may be a lottery, um, it may be a charity. We're trying to um, raise people's awareness because often what happens is that they start with a phone call to home or a piece of junk mail that says they've won a million pounds, something that, you know, is too good to be true, really. And then they start off by requesting small sums of money, um, either for um, solicitors' fees or... Um, customs for, to get the money into the UK. Um, we are just trying to raise people's awareness and, and get them to send us stuff in if they are concerned or they are a bit sort of iffy about something they've received or a telephone call that they've had. We want them to get in touch with us so we can say now I've been in. Well, we've already heard about those transfer rumours linking Kaka with a possible move to Manchester City. Let's check the rest of the sports headlines now with Sam Goodman. Thank you, James. Well, yes, let's move away from Kaka's reported move to Manchester City and on to the other sports news from the day. The brother of World Cup winner Danielson has said the Brazilian will sign for Bolton in the next few days and that the club gave Danielson the key to the closet at the training ground. The 31-year-old has been on trial at the Reebok over the past week and it seems he's done enough to impress manager Gary Megson. It's a big game at Old Trafford tonight as Manchester United entertain Wigan. Unfortunately, though, Rio Ferdinand is still injured and John O'Shea is set to replace the injured Patrice Evra. Evra will be out for three weeks, three weeks minimum, and maybe four weeks. Shouldn't be any more than that. He just went over in, in his foot and he's done the little ligament in the bottom of his foot. So we're, we're trying to get the swelling down in it, and uh, there's a lot of uh, you know, blood in there that's got to be cleared up. And that'll take a, a week, seven, eight, maybe seven to eight, ten days to get all that cleared up, and then we'll, we'll get him into training. Wigan manager Steve Bruce will look to take advantage of United's injury problems, and he'll be telling his side not to hold back at the Theatre of Dreams. Well, we're going to apply to the Premier League now to see if we can apply for 13. We're going to ask for 13. You've got to go and try. The most important thing is that you go and, and make sure that you go and, and don't let Old Trafford choke you and go and try and have a go because um, you know that you're up against one of the best teams in Europe, if not the best. So you've got to play at your maximum. And uh, if you play at your maximum and try um, and impose yourselves a little bit on the game and, and, and take part, make sure that you don't leave anything in the dressing room and, and not be phased by taking on uh, the European champions and the, and the league champions. A result from last night's rearranged League One match between Stockport and Swindon ended one all. Swindon took the lead through a penalty after County defender Jimmy McNulty pushed Simon Cox in the area, but Anthony Pilkington equalised after 73 minutes to earn County a point and to leave them seventh in the table. In Rugby Union, the Elite England squad was announced earlier today and the Sale Sharks winger Mark Cueto has been recalled, along with teammates Andrew Sheridan and Matthew Tate. Also named in the 32-man squad is ex sale fullback Ben Foden. The 23-year-old has been in exceptional form for Northampton this season. Finally, in ice hockey, Manchester Phoenix faced reigning champions the Coventry Blaze, and as you can imagine, it was a tough game. <laughs> Oh, 
they're a good team, you know, they're obviously contenders for the title and they've won they've won the title in the playoffs before, so we faced a good team and uh, you know, we gave them a we gave them a, a run for the money the whole way, so you know, guys worked hard so we've got to be take some positives out of it. They've just had the edge over us the, you know, the three games we played and hopefully the next time we can maybe turn it around and, and take the one goal lead home with us. Well, that's all from me for now. Join me again later on. I'll have all the build-up to United's match against Wigan this evening. Thank you very much, Sam. More sport with Andy Crane then from five o'clock tonight. Still ahead on the lunchtime news, the dangers of asbestos in our children's schools and also the mum who's got her hands full with one set of twins turning into teenagers just 11 months after her first set of twins did. Uh, I'm glad that I've got brothers and sisters like my age or one year older. I've been told it's about 500 million to one for the, the age gap between them. Welcome back to Channel M's Lunchtime News. Don't forget you can always find all of our main headlines online at channelm.co.uk. You can log on and watch our reports there 24 hours a day. Take a look now at the pictures from the huge power cut this time yesterday that blacked out thousands of homes, shops and offices here in Manchester with some coming to a complete standstill and also the research that blames Greggs for much of the rubbish blowing around our streets. That's at channelm.co.uk. Next, figures show the vast majority of children here in Greater Manchester are being taught in buildings that contain asbestos. It's long been known the chemical can cause cancer and now campaigners are demanding action, as Beverly Walkton reports. Thank you. The news that 86% of our schools here in Greater Manchester contain deadly asbestos which causes cancer is quite worrying, isn't it, Ian? I mean, what's your reaction? Well. I'm reassured in as much as we've had, a, we've had an asbestos survey, so we know that although there is asbestos in the school, it's safe, because asbestos which is covered, which is not exposed to the air, and which people aren't touching, doesn't present a risk. But of course, when you first think about this thing, it is an anxiety. Um, so we had it checked out here, and we were reassured um, that there wouldn't be a problem here. Now, in 18 months' time, when they pull this school down, they will bring in specialist teams who will have to strip all the asbestos out um, and make sure that none of us is anywhere near it so there'll be no risk to the students or the staff. Now you say that's 18 months away. Have parents expressed any worry at all? No, I don't think parents are aware. Um, but they also, I think, trust the school um, that if there was something which was potentially a danger, uh, we would take action. Now, 86% of schools, that's most of the schools in Greater Manchester, as a head, what sort of position has that put you in? Well, straight away, as a head, you're responsible for anything that happens on the school's premises. So if a child is in any way harmed, it comes down to me, and I'd be the one that would face charges. So you, you bear that in the back of your mind, but it's common sense approach, make sure things are safe, get experts in, they tell you what you have to do, what you don't have to do, and I'm always happy with that. Absolutely, good advice there. Well, join us at five o'clock when campaigners will be advising parents what to do if they feel that their child's school is at risk. Back to the studio. Thanks very much, Beverly. Now, if you're sick of turning on the news each day or opening up the papers and just finding more doom and gloom, we might have something to sort that out. We sent our reporter, Nina Warhurst, to Berry with a simple task. Find something to cheer you up. Well, it's not gone unnoticed at Channel M. The news recently has been pretty bleak. As well as the usual crime and violence, there have been hundreds of job losses across the region. And so Andy Crane set me a challenge. Could I find him some good news? Well, of course, Andy, I thought, I'll head to Sunny Berry. Have you had any good news recently? Uh, my friend's daughter's expecting a baby in the next few days. I haven't won the lottery or anything like that, no. So, um, uh, no, I'm just happy to be alive, basically. Good news is uh, that uh, all of us, uh, my family, they are healthy and no illness in the family. That's great news. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I heard of somebody who won a small amount on the lottery recently, and they're going to blow the lot in a party. Uh, well, spring is on its way. Christmas is out of the way. It's getting lighter. Feeling pretty okay about it, and. Uh, and you're going to be on telly. I'm going to be on telly, yeah. <laughs> All's good news for us, really. We're happy, we're healthy, and that's all you need. Our family are all right. That's all you need, really, isn't it? Well, have you had any good news recently? Yeah, my baby. 
and she happy and healthy? Yeah. Well, that's got to be good news. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've just got over my cold, that's all I can say. Well, that's pretty yeah. good news. Yeah, it is good news, yeah, yeah, brilliant, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wife starts, gets a pension now, <laughs> we come Friday. <laughs> that's brilliant news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've just booked a holiday. Where are you off to? Italy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've just booked a holiday. Where are you off to? Um, Las Vegas and New York. <laughs> but what's your good news? Well, she still loves me. After how long do you still love him? I'm 13 year old and he was 19 and he was in the airborne. And how old are you now? Me, 76 and he's 82. And you still love him. That's great yeah. news. <laughs> yeah. And if that's not managed to put a smile on your face, we've got more celebrations for you here. While Nina was out, she stopped by a house in Salford where the family were marking their second set of twins turning 13 just a few months after their first set of twins also became teenagers. A very special day for twins Becky and Norman Gregory, turning 13 on the 13th of January. Twins Beth and Patrick are already 13 and will turn 14 in February. And what makes them so special? Well, they're all brothers and sisters. So at one point, Mum Jane had two sets of twins under one. What are the odds on that? I've been told it's about 500 million to one for the, the age gap between them, so. So odds of 500 million to one, at times you must feel really lucky and at sometimes a little bit unlucky. <laughs> um, yeah, in fact, me and my husband want to pack our bags and leave home. <laughs> That'd be fantastic if we could. So exhausting for mum, but it must be great fun for the twins. We don't get on that much, you know. You don't get on? No, we're always arguing and fighting and calling each other. I bet you're glad you've got them, though. No, not really. A bit. <laughs> nah. Nah, it's like, it's like good, really. It's like I've got a little brother and he's not too young. So, like, I can do stuff with him rather than look younger, younger brothers. Uh, I'm glad that I've got brothers and sisters, like, my age or one year older because then you're not, like, lonely in the house by yourself. We do, we all get along, but just argue sometimes because silly things. So, yeah. And as if four 13-year-olds wasn't enough, one or two friends have popped by. <laughs> Four expensive teenagers, a house that's always full and a constant battle to keep the fridge stocked. But I bet Mum wouldn't change things for the world, would she? I'm counting the days down now till they're 18 and then shipping them all off to university, hopefully. At least you'll get rid of them at the same time. Well, yeah, hopefully. So, great, bring on 18. Come on! <laughs> Five more years to go! Nina Warhurst, Channel M News. Well the, sun's, well, the sun's been out in quite a few places this morning. Let's see if the weather's got any more reasons to keep us smiling. Here's Michelle Eagleton. Well, a bit of a colder day today. We're seeing highs of between four and five. That's the best you're going to get. This morning, stayed mainly dry right across Greater Manchester. A bit of a different picture this afternoon. Going to see some showers and also some wind coming in from the westerly direction. So wrap it warm tonight if you are going to be heading out and about. Staying with the rain overnight and the next couple of days, I'm afraid. Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we're going to see a lot of showers. Although the saving grace is on Saturday, we've also got a bit of sunshine too. Watching Channel M's lunchtime news, our main headline, Brazilian World Cup winner Kaká could be coming to Manchester City. The club's bosses are in talks with AC Milan trying to secure him for a record £100 million transfer. We'll have more on that in our early evening news with Andy Crane tonight from 5 o'clock. But from me and the rest of the lunchtime team, have a very good afternoon. Bye-bye for now.